It's Academic Life in Emergency Medicine. Anion got metabolic acidosis in 15 seconds using the rule of 15. I am Jeremy Faust, and this is a co-presentation with Corey Slovis. In an anion gap metabolic acidosis, you're looking for a low pH and an anion gap. The question is, is the PCO2 on your venous blood gas appropriately decreased? As bicarb falls, PCO2 falls. And the rule of 15 states that the measured bicarb plus 15 should equal the new expected PCO2 on your venous blood gas, plus or minus 2. It'll also equal the last two digits of the pH. Here's a patient with the following BMP. The anion gap is measured, and we take the rule of 15 and apply it. And we find that 30 is the expected PCO2, and that is the number that it is on the venous blood gas. We also look at the pH, and the last two digits are 3 and 0, which the rule also predicts. So this is just appropriate PCO2 compensation, an anion gap metabolic acidosis with secondary respiratory alkalosis. Here is a table showing bicarb on the left versus the rule of 15 as compared to Winter's formula. There's a corollary, which is as the bicarb approaches 5, the expected PCO2 actually should just be 15. Now let's take another patient. Bicarb plus 15 in this case is 27 plus or minus 2, so the PCO2 should be between 25 and 29. Let's take three venous blood gases, one where the PCO2 is 28. That follows the rule, so it's just a secondary respiratory alkalosis. A second patient, the PCO2 is 35. Doesn't follow the rule, it's too high. This must be another process, a primary respiratory acidosis superimposed. In a patient with a PCO2 of 20, that also does not follow the rule. It's too low. So we have a primary respiratory alkalosis on top of the other process. Experts in acid-base can tell if there is a compensation versus a second primary process. And now, in 15 seconds, you can. For Academic Life in Emergency Medicine, I'm Jeremy Faust. Thanks to Corey Slovis. Visit us on the blog and on Twitter.